also, uh, at the weekend, there were some games of football that occurred. I don't know if anyone stumbled across them, but Chelsea yep. uh, came out with a, a very big three points, a team that, that I am now even more sure of their title credentials. Uh, Man United squeaks over the line with a win against West Ham away. Uh, and Liverpool won again, although I'm not too worried about Liverpool or United in the long term, just Chelsea. We play Chelsea soon. Uh, we still haven't signed a striker, and if it was ever more evident than Saturday's performance, I, I don't know what to say. Rich, do you want to reevaluate anything you've said previously? No, I mean I, I still think that our, I, I still think we are, you know, that would be my favourites for the title. I think Chelsea and Liverpool are our rivals. I still think United are a pub team. If uh, Gareth Southgate hadn't been managing West Ham and making penalty substitutions at the weekend, they probably wouldn't have got three points. You mean um, David Moyes? Or, or was well, that, he was, know, he was learning about Gareth there, Southgate, but, yeah. wasn't he? I was, yeah, it was a very, very obviously subtle. Uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> but you know, I, funnily enough, I've, I've spent the last two days reading a hell of a lot of whinging from City fans. I think I enjoyed the Southampton game more than the three home games previously. Because I actually felt until the 95th minute we could win, lose or draw and we didn't play that well. But I actually thought a number of Southampton players did play well and I thought they actually gave it a go. I thought they came in, intending to actually play football and intending to get, you know, a a point or three from us, whereas... Does it not concern you? Me. Does it not concern you that the usual City excuse could not be used on Saturday? The usual City excuse when we fail to break a team down is because they've got 10 players in defence and they do nothing but and they don't come out of their half. Yeah. But that is just that's the antipode of Southampton because Southampton came out, yeah. attacked us, played against us and we couldn't... We, we, we struggled to live with it, if I'm honest. Does it, and that's yeah, Southampton. Does it con- yeah. Does it concern me... Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you know, it, it concerns me that we didn't beat Southampton, but would I rather watch matches like that every weekend than some of the one-sided, 10-behind-the-ball matches not. Of course that not. City play? Listen, some, yeah, of the worst, so, some of the worst games we're involved in, Rich, are the ones where we pump a team 5-6-0. Yeah. They're, some of, the, they're yeah. some of the worst games we're involved in because they just capitulate early doors and it's a cricket score. <clears throat> and it, yeah. it's not entertaining for the home fans of a certain persuasion, and it's not entertaining for the away fans in the slightest. Yeah. But it had it was a bit nostalgic to actually play well, a game. It, it that was, but if, if, if you noticed, I mean, like, listen, I, I have defended Sterling just verbatim, you know, just indefinitely yeah. all the time. But he was pretty tragic at the weekend, um, and and I noticed towards the end of the game. As far as my interpretation of the laws of the game are, if Sterling wouldn't have motioned towards the ball and interfered with play, it was actually Foden who got the second touch and Foden was still in an onside position. So it, yeah. that goal would have stood. Yeah, and I it, just, admit, it just felt as if don't... Sterling was so desperate yeah. to get involved and make a difference that he just his, his head completely went. I think Kyle yeah. Walker, again, has had a lobotomy since the Euros. I don't recognise my right back anymore. Yeah. Now, Liverpool fans are always deluded as hell when they say that Trent Alexander-Arnold is the best right-back in world football. It's been Kyle Walker for the last five years, without a doubt. Yeah. But this season, he seems to be way off it. Um, I yeah. said before the game that our midfield would be a particular slow incarnation of our midfield, and I was right, because it was sort of... There was a bit of Grealish in there. There was a, there was Ilkay Gundogan. And that has to be Ilkay Gundogan's worst game in a City shirt. It really does. And he's had a lot of stinkers, in my opinion. Yeah, uh, he was. He was Fern- good. Fern- I mean, I still... Fernandinho needs yeah. to just give it up now. I love Fernandinho. He has been one of our yeah. best players ever, but he's just he's just not in it anymore. He needs to get a coaching role now, and we need to take the risk of Lavia yeah. as a back. Yeah, I think we need. To, I think we need to um, take the risk with Lavia. I, th- I hope Lavia starts against Wickham. I think we also need to consider whether someone like a Zinchenko or a Cancelo and. Um, is given a go in a holding midfield role because I think we need to have a, another option other than Rodri. I think it's so possible, I, Rich, but I think I think, we need I think that. the the thing that will happen there is be careful what you wish for because I am sure that if Pep does play Cancelo or, or Zinchenko, he will try playing two DMs 
I don't think he's confident enough to play one of them. So, so you yeah. could see yeah. a combination. You yeah. could see Cancelo and Lavia together, and I'm not sure that that's what I want. I thought we were out, I thought we were out pressed for at least 80 minutes of the game by Southampton. Uh, I think they stopped us at source, and what I mean by source, because we like to build from the back. I thought they out pressed Gundogan. I thought they out pressed Fernandinho. Uh, I thought they out pressed uh, Walker and Cancelo, big time. Um, the only two p- players that came out of the game with any credibility, and I know you're not going to like this, was Aki and, and Diaz. If it weren't for them, we'd have probably lost the game. Well, I, um, I, think, I think Aki more than Diaz, if I'm honest. I think Diaz yeah, looked yeah, a little I, bit yeah. like a headless thought, chicken. I, I, Aki, Aki was pretty consistent. But, he was. But the, yeah, problem, thought, the problem is, when, you, whole, when you read deeper into the game, though, was Diaz? It is Diaz on? Like, look, listen. So we've had combinations like this before. Whenever we tried, I think it was, um, like for example, Laporte and Diaz work great together. Diaz and Stones work great together. But Laporte and Stones is a bit, a bit, bit of a wobble. So, mm. so maybe yeah. there's a potential there that, that Aki, Aki might have actually had a decent game. Yes, but Diaz might be totally out of his comfort zone working with Aki in a two partnership. So there is potential for that. I, I, I just I just thought I just thought we were out pressed for 80 minutes of the game massively, right? Uh, I thought Southampton deserved to win the game. That was my honest opinion. Um I thought they looked tired. Uh, and that's and, and that's interesting. Uh, they look, they look, hang on, hang on. made a big call about being tired. I know he did. Well I, 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 I had a text message conversation with someone that um, uh, we've often known that I know, and he said, Pep mentioned that we are the players are tired before Southampton and we need your support. He wasn't lying by saying that. Um, and if you look at the games we've played this season, if you count the Charity Shield as well, and, and the games we've played uh, this season, including the Champions League, you would say at least eighty percent of that team have played in every game. Yeah, season, they have, right? but they've pl- they've not gone past third gear yet, Alan. So I know. Hang I'm, on. I've got Hang bigger on. worries because if we're tired after six games in third gear, yeah. then there's bigger they, worries they, than we know. They, the players did look tired, okay, um, and and especially the older ones like the Fernandinho's and the Gundigans. Gundigan, Gundigan especially looked very very tired. Um, but how many times did? How many times did Southampton take the ball off City? Probably about 30 metres from the, the City's goal. Off Gundogan, Fernandinho, Walker and Kinsella. Mm. How many times did they get robbed of the ball? I agree with you. I agree with you, absolutely. But yeah. what, what I want to do is let's let Rich try and defend his position from, from before on this one. Because Rich, you, you have... You have been you you're not wrong in a way, but you have been you've been an ardent backer of this grow into the season, grow into yep. fitness, grow into all the rest of it. Are, are you not a little bit worried about that philosophy now? Um, I'm worried about whether any team in can compete for four trophies uh, in a season. I, I'm worried that us doing that last year took us a bit over the top. So. If you're asking me, do I think we're taking a chance with the league because we are aiming to go for Europe again, then I suspect that we may be. Um, and I think our players didn't have the pre-season and, and their fitness is not where you would ideally want it to be. But that said, we did it last year. Our fitness peaked in January and we still didn't have enough legs to last till um May playing at our best, so um, I I wonder if if that's an indication that we're going to have a slightly uh, eased off go for it in the league, Rich, Rich, in the Rich, Champions League. But yeah, Rich, yep. Rich, you made a comment last week or the week before saying I can't see any teams apart from Liverpool and and City hitting ninety points plus. My argument with you is... Uh, no, hit, Chelsea and Liverpool, I think, are our rivals. Yeah, um, yeah. Oh, that's right, yeah. Well, you said that over 90 points. I can't see Manchester City without a striker hitting over 90 points because we haven't done that. Last year, league with 80-odd points, OK? Yeah. Uh, and we, we came nowhere near 90. And I think it's going to need at least 93, 
95 points to win the league we're, this season. We're on course I, I, for mid 60s if 70 at the most. We're not we're nowhere near a 90 point team right now. No without near. without a striker, without a recognised striker, I cannot see City getting anywhere near that. I really my, can't. My bet would be that City, Liverpool and Chelsea all come in the 80s. The, the problem was that the, the, the ball wasn't coming through from the back four at all. And usually they build from there and they play through the midfield and then out. Because, and, because, because Alan, start, let, let me on, break this down for you. Southampton dominated our midfield at home. Big, big worries, they're... mate. Big worries. Oh, you, I hope you agree. Yeah, I, I thought that um, because they weren't building from the back and they were getting caught high up the, the field, which they were, um, the, the, midfield, the, the, the front, front midfield and the front three were starved of the ball yeah. for a majority of the time. And they were getting frustrated. And they were. So they were playing, trying to play million dollar balls. Instead of yeah. playing the way we normally, and I, and I think our, you know, the the midfield's problem was partly the defence's problem as well. Yeah. In that, yeah. you know, normally if someone presses us like Southampton do, we pass through the lines and we leave them quite exposed, and we didn't do that. So that was that was the defence as well as the the midfield not being on their game. You have to you have to compliment Southampton for that. It's the first time I've seen yeah. City. So it's the first time I've seen City get. Um, been pressed since Liverpool a few years ago at Anfield. We were, we, I thought we were exceptionally lucky not to concede a penalty in the sending off. Oh, let's be yeah. honest. Let's be honest. That was a penalty. That was a yeah, really hard. John Moss, John Moss, a guy who, who's never been in our in our backyard as a mate for some reason, a, a massive brain fart. That was a penalty. Yeah. Southampton. That was a penalty. Whether you were scored it or really, not, I don't know. Yeah, there were three it was a penalty really bad card. decisions in that game. I think Southampton player should have been sent off when he was given a yellow in the 80th minute that yep. challenge was easily as bad as the uh and um, arsenal's uh, zaka's challenge a couple of weeks before that was a yep. definite yep. red i think walk what it was a penalty to me i don't know how that got changed because not only was it given but it was reversed which is bizarre and yep. and i actually don't think either sterling or Foden was offside because that ball didn't go forwards to sterling so um, I'm not sure they applied it the offside. The second, it was yes, they did, they did, they did. It was the second phase of play. Sterling becomes active because he is, it is in. interfering with play with the goalkeeper. Right. So it technically, te it's, it's like a technicality, Rich. It's, it's one of the world's yeah. worst court cases, and it bore everyone to death, honestly. Yeah. But he was interfering. So they with were play offside. calling him offside because ten seconds earlier he drifted offside and come back. Yes. I think that's, that's I think the way was, football works now, Rich. It is the sport yeah. of the pedant. I'll be honest with you. I thought I thought we were lucky to get a point. I think it's a point gained rather than a point uh, two points lost because on, point, on, yeah. The balance, yeah, on the balance of points, the answer were far the better side. And we've got injury problems, haven't we now? So there's quite a few injuries in the in the side now, which well, the, that's the a nice little ones. segue. So we have got injury yeah. problems, Alan. Why don't you talk us through those injury problems and what potentially oh. what potentially can that now mean for this Wickham game that is Rich's revenge? Yeah. Well, well, <laughs> well we, we've got currently on the injury list John Stone's reoccurrence of his injury that he had uh, before the season started um, is now come back when he played for England, and I know there's a bit of a row going on between City. Um, and England about that because when he went to England, he went to England with a slight injury. He was recovering from it, and 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 the physio in England passed him fit, but City was concerned that he, he wasn't fit. He ended up playing, and he's got a, re, a, a recurrence of that injury again. Laporte is now injured. I don't know how serious that is. I'm hoping he's fit for the weekend, uh, but he, he's doubtful. We've now got an injury of Sinchenko. He's injured. So we've got now got no recognised left full back um, in the club apart from playing the right footed uh, Kinsella. Okay, then we've got Gundy who who's just pulled a slight injury. Rodri's doubtful because he is also injured. So we've got some serious injuries um, where I think you know it, it, uh, we were playing against Chelsea, PSG, and Liverpool. The last thing we want is our main defenders out against the yeah. big teams. Uh, well, it's uh, make uh, or break time now for Lavia, isn't it? And people like Lavia. Let's that, that's, that's, well, that's see the lap. Let's see Lavia. Let's see what correct. they can do. Because, yeah, because the, worst th the worst thing that Pep can do, and it is part of Pep's track record, he's done this before, and the worst thing he can do is 
Make players play on injections. Make players play on injuries. Let's see if we can get 60 minutes out of De Bruyne and then De Bruyne's out for three months then. Let's not do that, Pep. Let's just be yeah. brave. Let's be brave, Pep. Yeah. You want, you want, on, on, on Tuesday night against um, Richie's favourite team, Wickham, I want to see... I want to see McAtee. I want to McAtee, see McAtee. I want to see Palmer. Palmer. Delap. I want to see Delap playing. Uh, yeah. I, we've got two young lads centre halves. Get them in. We can't afford to take risks at the yeah. moment. If, and if it means us losing, we've won the League Cup four years on the bounce. I'll take it. If we lose, I'm not bothered. Yeah. We'll give these kids a go because I want to see maybe two of them step up and come in and help us. Lavia. Let's have a look at him. Let's see if he can handle playing against men. Yeah. yeah. Right, you know, it's Wickham, but it's still playing against blokes. And I think well, we've put a few senior players in who we can afford. So I would play... Mahrez. The laps playing, I'd, I'd play yeah. Sterling. Mahrez, Sterling, Sterling, yeah. Yeah. The thing, the Foden, thing about Wickham is, Alan... Will get a run out. I think Foden thing, will get a run out as well. Yeah, Foden, yeah, Foden need will. Yeah. Time he, in his legs. He, he, need, he yeah, does yeah. need time in his legs. The thing about Wickham, Alan, that the quality of football that they play is lesser. I don't think anyone will be offended by that statement. But they are very definitely men. They will mix it up, and that Correct. is a great test for Lavio. Well, the only way that Pep's going to find out if these guys can actually handle, uh, you know, fully grown men and and uh, kicking them and pushing them around is by giving them a go. If it means us losing, I will take it. Uh, if it yeah, means, because agree. I, I, and, we, and I think yeah. you know you want you want probably seven kids, and then you want three or four old senior players, players where yeah. we can afford. Yeah. We may not be able to afford to play a senior defender, um, but we'll have, you know, Stefan is a senior player in goal. Yep. I think we can afford to play one of our attacking midfielders and two of our forwards who are more senior. So, you know, the likes of St- Sterling, you know, Mares to, you know, Stefan to give some guidance and, you know, help them through. It would be nice to play a midfielder who's senior, but again, you know, it would be a bit risky because I don't think we can risk Fernandinho or Rodri no. or all those. So I think Rodri, you know, Rodri, let him go. Rodri's McAtee, in. Palmer and uh, Lavia in midfield, maybe. Sterling, yeah. Delap and Mares up front. And, you know, I'm not, not sure who's who we've got around to play the back four. But... Well, Aki, Aki will play, but we are over-reliant on him right now. Now, listen, let me just talk about Nathan Aki a second with this. The game time is getting... Yes, he's putting in a good showing for himself. I think he's an incredible human being being able to play at this moment in time. Yeah, Considering absolutely. what's going on. So that, that is a true testament to the character of the man and he has passed that yeah. test. But all, all that being said, ultimately he, he still is our fourth choice centre-half. Yeah. And I don't he think is. I'm being unfair by saying that. He's not above Stones in the pecking order, Laporte or Diaz in the pecking order. So. But, but to be fair, Ralph, right, if, if Virgil play van Dijk yeah. played for us, he'd be our fourth choice centre half. So yeah. that's of not. He was. Virgil being, van Dijk would be training with the kids because he's useless. Laporte and Diaz. Yeah. yeah. Being behind L- Stones, Laporte, and Diaz, who there isn't a team in world football who's got three better centre backs than that. Is not I'll say that to not a United fan to or a Liverpool fan, you know, the, the, all the delusion around the world about their great centre halves. Um, so, so yeah, I think listen, I think Wickham will be a very interesting game, and I think it's going to be the game from all the fixtures we've played this season. I think Wickham is the one I'm going into with the most interest because I want to see what those EDS lads can do. I really do. I've been crying out for yeah. it, crying out for it. Well, and, this is the chance, you know, what get it. you know, what. Get it. If I was an if I was an EDS lad right now, okay, and I'm thinking right, I'm starting on Tuesday against Wickham. At the weekend, City play Chelsea. They've got a few injury worries. If I really, really, really play my heart out and do everything I can and leave everything on the pitch, there's a chance that I'm in that match day squad at least. You know, yeah. there's a chance that I'm getting 20 minutes at, at Chelsea. And you know what? There's even a chance that I'm starting against Chelsea if yeah. I'm someone like Lavio. So. Put it all on the pitch. Put it all on the... The gauntlet is out there. Pick it up. Take it on. And to, and to be honest with you, I reckon there's a fair few City fans, especially especially the older school ones, who getting three or four of these kids in the side and getting them actually playing quite a few games, we'd probably be happier finishing third and having five youth players come through 
than winning the league with the same squad as last you, year. You I'd, I'd that, love that, to see him Rich, play. Rich, if you offer me that right now, bite your hand off. You'd take it. I'd, I think I'd probably take it. I'd love to see them get a go. Yeah. And, you know, maybe they'd just do what, you know, when no one wins anything with kids and go and win something with kids. It's going to be inter- it's going to be interesting. It is kid. There is a few of those kids that potentially can make it without any shadow of a doubt. Um, and you know, because of the injuries, like United did a few years ago, if you remember, on Blue Van Harm, they had a load of injuries. They gave these kids a chance. Hell, we saw Rashford come in. We went, whoa, where yeah. have they got this kid from? You know, uh, let's hope let, let, uh, Dilap comes in and Cole Palmer and uh, yeah. and people like this come in and, and make a team. And just, uh, we all go, wow. And then they get games. They get yeah. games and they, and they stand out. And yeah, and I, think, you know, and I think if you play one or two of them alongside the, the nine best players, that's when players come in yeah. and do well. If you only play them in the games where you drop seven or eight of your players and so they're not playing alongside yeah, the best experience. players, it's hard. And, and you bring them in games when you're just resting people because this game's not as important. But what I would love to see is one or two of them playing alongside the rest of the uh, the best team. Pep, Pep needs Give to them show, a chance. Yeah, well, Pep needs to show some balls and do that. Part of the problem with that, there's two problems that I see with what you're saying there, Rich. One is injuries. So they can't play amongst the best team right now. They can play along, amongst the best of the well, rest. Well, sorry, the best, and of, two, best available team. Th- this season, yeah. I don't even think Pep knows what his best starting eleven is this season, if I'm honest. I think in previous years it was nailed on. It was absolutely nailed on in previous years, but this season I'm not too sure. I mean, because if you look at it, was it one year, a year ago or two years ago, we were all baffled when Maras was the first name on the team sheet. But right now, Riyad Maras ain't getting a sniff. Sterling, mm. three years ago, first name on the team sheet. Right now, you won't even ask him to lace people. Uh, do you know what, though? I think if everyone was fit, there are nine or ten of that team you wouldn't have many questions about, to but, be honest. For me, yeah. for me, Stones, Stones, Diaz, Bernardo, they're the only three. I think me. I think Pep, if fully fit, De Bruyne would start every single time. Oh, absolutely. Shane would start every yeah. time. Grealish would probably start every time now. You know what? I think, um, I think De Bruyne's a great player, but he's not, he's not a, he's not a worldie. <laughs> but Pep not. doesn't agree with you, so you know, <laughs> but I, I, I out think Pep all the time anyway. If you so. were manager, Rob, if you were manager, <laughs> I'd agree with you about De Bruyne, but Pep's manager, and I think I think he would start Grealish, De Bruyne, Foden, Rodri, uh, Diaz, Laporte or Stones. I'm not quite clear. I think he'd generally start Walker and um, probably at the moment Cancelo. But I think he knows who his preferred eleven is at the minute, um, or certainly nine of them. I'm less sure than ever before that he does, Rich. <laughs> for for the club, it's all about Saturday. You know, we're doing the game against Wickham is just it's about, about not injuring that. anyone for Saturday, isn't it? It's about you know testing people's fitness or abilities for Saturday. So. I suspect even on Monday, Pep will be worrying about his tactics for Chelsea, not his tactics for Wickham. But what about the old adage that people like to throw out there, which I don't believe for a second, which is one game at a time. Pep only thinks one game at a time, which I don't. That's believe. nonsense. That, I know. That, I, know it, I know it's nonsense, but you try. <laughs> you try telling nonsense. some people that. Yeah, but we all know it's nonsense, so we can just accept it as nonsense. Yeah, he thinks three games in front, mate. Oh, trust me, he does. He plans. But, you know, it's not the week we wanted to get injuries, that's for sure. Absolutely. It's not the month. I mean, honestly, this month, is it's a, it's a season-defining month already. Yeah. And everyone's like, Rob's pressing panic buttons. I'm not. Think about it. No. Think, no, think about this month. Been... Champions League, PSG, Leipzig. We've passed the Leipzig test, which we should have passed yeah. anyway. Wickham yeah. is the League Cup. League Cup's the trophy that we've pursued the most over the last four years. We've won it four out of four. Chelsea, then we've got Liverpool just after the month. Paris Saint-Germain in between. That three very, very tasty fixtures. So, yeah. something's got to yeah. give. And and doubly yeah. so, something's got to give because of the injuries. I mean, I would, I, I'd be, you know, Send send some of those kids out to play in Paris against Messi, give them the experience of their life. I mean, I just genuinely would be 
you know. So when not, Lavia's not got Messi in his pocket for not, can we can we finally put an end to the Messi's a goat debate when Lavia's got him in his pocket for ninety minutes? Well, imagine what, what, what that would do for Lavia's confidence. Rob, 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 Messi hasn't scored yet for PSG yet. Huh. I, I'm stuck. sorry, but the only people that are shocked by that statement are thirteen and play FIFA. Yeah. Real people who watch actual football know why. Well, I'm just hoping we get through the Wigan game without any injuries and don't use the main players. And let's pray to God that Pep's playing the kidology with the injuries that uh, our defence is going to be playing at weekend, our, our, our A-team defence, because we're going to need them next week, yeah. big time. Generally, I will say that our injury, our players always come back about five times earlier from injuries than they're ever supposed to. So I think we do play on that a bit. Um, my main thing for this week is I really want to see Delap and Lavia. Yeah. Because I think I think we haven't got a nine, but we have got a really good nine at the you know under twenty threes level. So I want to see him get some games for the first team and yeah. it's got to be, surely got to be against Wickham. And I think our biggest weakness in the squad at the minute is central defensive midfield so yep. I want to see Lavia get a go I, I suspect as we just talked about Bernardo can actually come out and do a fair bit in that role I think he's clever enough and he's he can do that and and play a much deeper role and I think against you know against the bigger games we may need that you know after Wickham um, but I want to see Lavia you know everyone's raving about him Aussie's told us, you know, he's the best young player who's coming through in years and how highly Belgium and City think of him. Well, let's see him. Because I'd actually like to see him coming off the bench in the league and I'd like to see the lap coming off the bench in the league and starting to actually see if they can play in the team. Because, you know, there's been plenty of players over the years who've come into midfield and attack at 18 and shown they're plenty old enough to be good enough. And based on what they've done at those younger levels, those two kids could be what Wayne we need. Rooney, Phil Folden. Yeah. So let's 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 hope for the best, and let's hope for the best for Wickham, which is obviously an opportunity for the young lads to win. So let's yeah. see them do well. Let's, I just I want, just want them to do well, so that way they can put them in the shop window for the manager to say, "Yeah, I'm going to play a few of these." And it would be even sweeter if we can batter Wickham with the kids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. With a team that costs less than theirs, although I suspect we'll just play one one player like Raheem plays, and we blow that out of the water by about tenfold. But I'd do that if I see if I was. This is why I need to be city manager because if I was city manager, I really would try and put out a starting eleven that costs less than Wickham starting eleven because the newspapers would be absolutely screwed. What could they possibly print at that point? <laughs> then, then you'd probably accidentally put someone on the bench who cost more and they'd mention that. You know, it's like yeah. I, I didn't see anyone in the media mention that United's team at Young Boys cost nine hundred and four million pounds and Young Boys cost fourteen point five. I'm not sure if it's the eleven or the the squad, maybe it's the squad. But you know, Young Boys cost what, one and a half percent of the cost of United's team. Oh, 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 oh,